Born and raised in Chicago, Lester Crown received a BS in chemical engineering from Northwestern University and an MBA from Harvard Business School. He is chairman of Henry Crown & Company, a family-owned and operated company, which includes diversified manufacturing operations and real estate, including the Aspen Skiing Company. In 1985, through the family's long friendship with the Klutznik family, Lester was approached by Tom Klutznik to join him, Marvin Davis, and Mickey Miller in the purchase of the Aspen Skiing Company. After telling Tom that he doubted he would be interested because he knew nothing about the ski industry, he overcame his skepticism when an old friend with extensive industry knowledge, Bob Maynard, convinced him that it was a good business investment. The Crowns agreed to join Tom's group as a 50% owner, provided that it did not include involvement in management. The Crowns became sole owners in 1993, the same year that the Aspen Skiing Company purchased the Aspen Highlands in a joint partnership with developer Gerald Hines. Over the years, the Aspen Skiing Company has greatly expanded its terrain and upgraded its infrastructure. In the late 80s, it began diversifying its holdings and is now the owner of the Little Nell and the Limelight Hotel in Aspen and soon to be Snowmass Village. In 2008, in support of its guiding principle of environmental sustainability, the company invested $1 million in Western Colorado's largest solar array, powering a science building at Colorado Rocky Mountain School and sending excess energy into Carbondale's grid. The Crowns had always looked upon Aspen as a unique year-round town that combines skiing with world-class cultural institutions, the Aspen Institute being one of the main and most important among them. It provided cultural leadership, it provided an attraction in the off-season from skiing, and it drew a totally different uh, collection of people there. Um, and I know Dad felt all of those features were really important to having Aspen be a flourishing, diverse, and year-round town. In 1987, the Aspen Institute sold their Meadows property to a private group and planned to move to Crestone, Colorado, where it had already purchased land. Savannah Limited Partnership, owned by Mohammed Hadid, later purchased the land out of foreclosure. The partnership planned to develop the Ritz-Carlton Hotel on land also acquired in a foreclosure. Well, the Aspen Institute really gave to Aspen uh, its, its cultural base to a great extent, and to have lost it would have been uh, a, a real negative as far as the town is concerned. A multifaceted deal was struck between the city and the Aspen Institute. The Institute President, David McLaughlin and Bob Maynard, along with Lester Crown and other Institute supporters, worked with the city to create the Aspen Meadows Consortium. This group negotiated with the city toward a positive outcome for the Meadows, the surrounding property, and for Hadid. Lester actively worked with McLaughlin, Maynard, and representatives of the Music Associates and Physics Institute in the negotiations with Savannah. I think two features of uh, Dad's capabilities were essential to getting that negotiation with the Institute uh, to land successfully. Um, the first was, it, it wasn't about him, it wasn't about a personal agenda, it wasn't about personal gain. I, I think he, he really saw this as an important civic mission. Secondly, um, uh, Part of being a good negotiator is being empathetic. It's understanding what the other side wants, understanding what they want to get out of it. And in this case, um, people may, may have been a little bit hardened in where they thought they were headed with, uh, with, with their own agendas, and I think he was able to bring everybody to the table and reconcile things and reignite support for the Institute in a way that had been flagging. The successful conclusion was that the city rezoned the Aspen Meadows to allow for the new buildings for the Institute and a limited residential development for Savannah. As part of the Meadows deal, Savannah agreed to donate the Meadows property back to the Aspen Institute. Without the agreement reached by the consortium, the Institute would likely have left Aspen. Lester played a key role in making that agreement happen and keeping the Aspen Institute in Aspen. Concurrently, David McLaughlin, Joan Harris, and Lester Crown formed and led a Meadows campaign to raise $32 million for the music festival and the Aspen Institute. The successful campaign raised money for deferred maintenance and needed capital projects on both campuses. 
We felt that the only way we could raise the kind of money we were talking about is that if we had a combined campaign and then split the proceeds. We raised the $32 million, we split it, Music put up their tent and the Institute put in living quarters for people that came to the Institute, and, but primarily it was used originally for the deferred maintenance that had been put aside for a number of years at both uh, organizations. Lester had a dream to establish an enlightened leadership program and believed the Aspen Institute was the perfect organization for it. Thus, the Henry Crown Fellowship Program was born in 1997, named for his father. We always wanted to do some things uh, in my dad's memory, and one of the suggestions in order to honor his memory was to form something called the Henry Crown Fellowship, in which you brought together at two Aspen, I say kids because I, I have to use the term for those that are 25 to 45, who are already very successful and discuss together with moderators at the Institute the things that they could do for to increase their value-based leadership, things they could do for the, the community and the, and the world around them. There are over 400 alumni, and in every case, there are 400 of the most accomplished, able people that you can imagine. So it's been a most, most successful program, and one that really has honored my dad's memory. I got to know Lester Crown in 2003 when I became a Henry Crown Fellow. Little did I know at that time that I would later come to run the Henry Crown Fellowship Program as Managing Director, and I would have almost weekly interaction with Lester. He's a type of individual who walks into a room and doesn't walk to the front of the room to look for his reserve seat, but stand and help others find their seat first. In every way, he's been an example to me. This program was so successful that it laid the foundation for the Aspen Global Leadership Network. The AGLN is now a worldwide community of young leaders from business, government, and nonprofits with more than 2,400 fellows from over 50 countries. It's been an absolute pleasure for me to work with him at the Aspen Institute, but most importantly, I learn every time I'm with Lester the value of being comfortable with your values, but also humble as you walk with other people. Somebody so great and yet somebody so caring and kind and humble. Every day I think, okay, how can I be a little bit more like Lester Crown? Lester is a life trustee of the Aspen Institute and a member of the Board of Overseers of the Henry Crown Fellowship Program. Lester resides in the Chicago area with his wife, Renee. They have seven children, 27 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren.